So if you're going to get, what should you get more of? Now, King Solomon, who is regarded as the richest and wisest king who ever lived, he said, get two things. So what are they? Well, I'll break it down in this episode of the Wealth and Wisdom Series, episode four, starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, and welcome to episode four of the Wealth and Wisdom series, where we will break down a proverb every week on Sunday nights for the next 31 weeks. And right now we're in the fourth week of doing so. So if you haven't done so already, please click like on this video and hit subscribe to make sure you do not miss another episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series on the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get right into it. What did the King Solomon, who's known as the wisest and richest king who ever lived, what did he say for you to get? What should you prioritize? He said, get two things. Is there more money? No. Nope. Is it more land, more real estate? No. Nope. Is it uh, new territories? Is it new relationships with other kings in their lands? He says, nope. Two things you need to get. He says, you need to get wisdom and understanding. What? Yes, he says, get wisdom and understanding. I know that's crazy because some of you guys are like, wait, listen, I was thought I was going to get some money. How do I get some cash? How do I make seven figures? How do I make seven figures? No. King Solomon says, get wisdom and understanding. Now, keep this in mind. Here's the foundational verse of chapter four of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter four, verse five through nine, it reads like this. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it costs all you have. Get understanding. Cherish her, and she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown. Now, some of you are thinking like, what? Some of you guys are asking yourself, can I pocket something right now by watching this episode? Can I put something in my bank account at the end of this video? And the short answer is no. See, that's the problem that we have today. Crazy to think that social media seems to make success so easy and overnight. But a lot of people don't see the last 13, 14, 15 years, the last 22, 23 years I put into business to learn and master money without a college degree, without a financial services background, without a business background, without a sales background. So many people today, even accelerated because of social media, screw up their money game so fast. Why? Because they try to get the short bag. They try to win money in the short term. They see all of these things, all these people making money on Bitcoin, NFTs, e-commerce, real estate, et cetera, et cetera, but they don't realize if you're gonna get money, first thing you wanna do is get wisdom and understanding because you can make money in the short term, sure, but if you're constantly in the short term all the time, guess what starts to happen? You start gravitating away from what King Solomon says in terms of values and principles. The middle of everything that you do should be centered around values and principles. That is part of wisdom and understanding because values and principles withstand the test of time. I put this tree up here because you know, I remember growing my money tree. I'm thinking and having a visualization of what growing this money tree is like. And here you are growing your money tree and the winds of life are just blowing by. That when the winds of life come blowing by, how wide and deep are your roots? How wide and deep are your roots? Did you water them to be deep? Did you water them to be wide? Because when the winds of life come blowing by and they'll blow by very, very harshly in your life, how strong are they? Do they stand the test of time? Because they're centered upon values and principles. In this episode of Proverbs chapter four, King Solomon says, make sure you wrap your mind around and pay the cost of wisdom and understanding. For example, I've been visiting this church here in Frisco, Texas, Elevate Life. And uh, the pastor has a mastermind group. I thought this is freaking awesome. So this pastor is actually thinking about blessing the business community because at the age of 40 years old, this pastor, Pastor Keith Kraft, started his church at 40 years old in the month when he was a leadership and business coach to corporations 
that month he made six hundred thousand dollars of which he took ten percent of that along with some of his buddies and uh, fellow brothers and sisters in christ and they decided to create a church so he took that sixty thousand amongst everybody else and they established a church here in frisco texas amazing story fast forward to uh, 22 years later his mastermind is either online via zoom once a month or in person and guess which costs more of course one in person costs more but nevertheless it's not for free there's a charge and i won't disclose what it is but there's a charge and it's a significant amount of money to be part of this leadership mastermind because here's a principle in order for you to value things there is a cost wouldn't you agree how many times have you valued something that you get for free we value things that we pay for i mean we just had christmas holidays right who values the christmas gifts more is it the kids who got it for free or the parents who took time from their salary their hourly wages however they made money to go to the store be thoughtful in what gift they're gonna pick for the kids wrap it put it on the tree and patiently and excitingly wait for the kids surprise when they open up their presents now who begin values it more it's the kids that don't value it. It's the parents that value it more. So the receiver of something for free doesn't value it because now there's no price or meaning to it because there's no sacrifice in order to obtain it. So it's interesting here how in King Solomon, you're looking at these things and he has three areas here, which I extracted from the Bible. And I'm also using the John Maxwell leadership Bible in my Bible study, because I'm reading the Bible from the perspective of a leader, because God's people needs to be leaders. So there's three things that in chapter four, King Solomon guides us to do. Number one, guide. In verse 14 through 19, it reads like this. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of the evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. For they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter to the full light of day but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness they do not know what makes them stumble I mean come on by the time uh, you've been watching this video you can kind of tell whether somebody's righteous or somebody's wicked but somebody's up to something or really what their heart is and what their intentions are you kind of get that from people and if you haven't built that skill well, guess what welcome to this video and start building that skill some people call it the bs filter correct you need to sharpen and empty out or make sure you carry a bs filter and it's called in the spiritual world it's called discernment okay and so when you look at these things you look at god's word through values and principles and getting wisdom and understanding as a guide the second thing is you use god's word as a guard check this out it reads like this in verse 20 through 25. my son pay attention to what i say Turn your ears to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them in health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. You keep your mouth free of perversity. You keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. And then the third thing is also to gauge. So guide, guard, and gauge. Where are you at in this whole thing? Let's look at what Proverbs again, verse 26 and 27 reads. It goes like this. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Now, some of you may be asking, well, how do I get then more wisdom and understanding? If I can't cash money after watching this video, but through the process of gaining wisdom and understanding, I'm able to get money or get to my level of financial success, prosperity, to feed my family, take care of the people I love and care about and, and build wealth and build generational compounding uh, wealth, et cetera, et cetera, whatever that is. How do you get more wisdom? It's simply asking deeper questions of yourself and finding insight about your craft and your decisions. You know, it's very often that our teams, we get together and our teams get together Again, to find out this mantra of outwork, out strategize, out improve, outlast. And oftentimes we find ourselves in this area of guiding, guarding, engaging right here in strategy. And as we're implementing the strategy, we're improving that strategy. As we're improving that strategy, we're working that strategy. But oftentimes people just stop 
when the going gets good and the going gets tough and they stop and they find something else and they jump to something else and jump to something else. Why? Because they're so short-sighted about their goal that they never outlast. Like right when a breakthrough is about to happen and you know that breakthrough is about to happen when all you know what breaks loose, that's when people quit. That's when people say, let me find something else to do. Because you should see in the areas of wisdom and understanding, that's when God is about to reveal himself to you, what those plans are. Now, after being in business for a little over 23 years, I've seen a lot of people come and go. I've seen a lot of people in three, four years just hit it like gangbusters, just just tearing it up. And the next thing you know, they get caught up. Now, when I was in my 20s and I first started business at 24, 25 years old, I always used to laugh at people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. I said, yo, yeah, you're old. Yeah, you're old. Yes, you're moving too slow. Yada, yada, yada. And in my ambition and in my eagerness, you know, I didn't ask in that process. I didn't ask for wisdom and understanding. I never asked them why they think the way they think. And now that I'm in my 40s, and now that I'm raising kids in their 20s, now I'm in that seat. And I understand very quickly and very easily, and I tell the kids this, the older you get, the wiser and smarter your dad becomes. Because you're gonna face a lot of things in your journey, whether through life, success, prosperity, wealth, and happiness, you're gonna face a lot of situations. And hopefully in those situations, you don't put yourself in a position of being isolated, me, myself, and I, because that's exactly where the devil or the enemy, your competition, that's where exactly where they want you. By yourself, trying to figure this stuff out all on your own. I didn't realize that in my 20s, I still had a whole lot to learn. I've often said that I've paid my mistakes in my 20s for the entire decade of my 30s. So I hope by you watching this episode that you somehow take from that whatever you wish and make sure you avoid a lot of the mistakes I made in my 20s. But yet keep in mind that King Solomon was just a mere young teenager when he took over as king. And then what he asked for and what he got helped his reign create a golden age for his people. How did God reveal to Solomon that conversation that led him to rule for a 40 year period and again lead his people to the golden age? Let's take a look here at 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 6 through 9. It reads like this. God appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon responds with, no, well, now my Lord God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I'm only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servants a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? (laughs) Young teenager talking like this. I mean, how many young teenagers, how many 20-year-olds, how many even 30-year-olds have this hunger yet humility about themselves? Hey, listen, God, I don't know everything. Help me with this opportunity. Help me with my career. Help me with my new business. Help me with this thousand dollars I got back on a tax refund. Show me what I need to do with these finances. Here's what God responds with. It's in 1 Kings chapter 3, 11 through 14. Let's continue. It reads like this. Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal amongst kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Wow, that's profound. So when you're asking yourself some questions, as you might be, consider asking yourself this question. What are you really asking God for? You see, oftentimes people pray for the wrong things. And right away, you get an answer from God. No. Is that the way King Solomon prayed when he was king? And it's not like he was a wealthy king at that. They had enemies. 
They had people asking him for stuff. So God has given you a kingdom. God has given you a family. God has given you a business. God has given you a career. God has given you a thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, a hundred thousand bucks. God has given you equity in your house. God has given you assets that you potentially may be inheriting. God has given you a retirement plan through your job. Are you asking God for wisdom? Or are you saying, God, just give me a 20% return in the next 90 days? Is that what you're asking God for? Are you asking God, say, Lord, help me win the lottery? Is that what you're asking God for? And uh, I'm reminded of a trip that we took to Jekyll Island because as a company, our CEO, our co-founders of our company, we took off to Jekyll Island and for two and a half days, the importance of discovering our values and principles took us two and a half days to create a document. So therefore we can get together. And I remember the deliberations. We had to put our cell phones away for two and a half days. The only time we got our cell phones was early in the morning and late, late at night when we were done. But throughout the day, no cell phones, no connection with the outside world, no social media, no texting, no cell phones. We had to tell our families, if you have an emergency, call this person, then they'll get to us. But in the meantime, our cell phones are in the bag. But for those two and a half days, three days, we put ourselves in Jekyll Island and we just studied ourselves. We learned about ourselves and came up with this great document of what our company stood for, what our values and principles stood for. What is yours for your family? What is yours for your business? Have you even thought about it? I didn't think about it. And hopefully in your journey right now, you can either restart or as you begin your new journey, you can start from fresh, ask yourself, what are you really asking God for? With that being said, I'm curious, what are you asking God for? And if you're daring enough and you're bold enough, put it in the comment section below. I am asking God for, fill in the blank. I am asking God for, fill in the blank in the comment section below. In addition, if you agree with me, you don't agree with me, or you came across a different area of enlightenment and awareness when reading, chapter four of Proverbs, please put it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and click notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series, episode five, coming to you next Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy from Dallas, Texas, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys, bye-bye. Let's <laughs> go.